don't worry. What would Pedro say in this situation? Don't worry, I'll handle it. And I am a musketeer, remember? Tonight's a full moon, so let me take care of this. I'll fight to make up for you, Pedro. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today, we are going to be examining the prime rabbit extraordinaire of the series, Carrot. Carrot is a rather small yet somehow well-endowed rabbit mink, hailing from the phantom island of Zoe. She is generally a fun-loving and naive young rabbit. However, as with all minks, Carrot can be quite aggressive when it comes to protecting her home territory. Although it should be said that she can be quite easily calmed down by somebody simply patting her head. Furthermore, Carrot also possesses a grand lust for adventure, having never stepped outside of Zoe at the time of meeting her in the series. And as a result, she has a somewhat, shall we say, isolationist education. For example, not knowing exactly what humans are, Carrot will generally refer to them as lesser minks and stuff like that. Amongst the mink tribe itself, Carrot has two key relationships, the first of which being with her mentor, Pedro. And this relationship sprang into action when a young Carrot joined the Musketeer squad, the main combative branch commanded by one of Zoe's two leaders, Inu Arashi. As Musketeers, all members of the squad are trained in the art of swordsmanship. However, Carrot was less than gifted in the sword due to no fault of her own. It just wasn't what she was born to wield. And after watching the captain of the Musketeer squad repeatedly try and fail to teach Carrot the sword, Pedro interfered and provided Carrot with a pair of gauntlets, a weapon much more suited to her particular fighting style which were conveniently shaped like oversized rabbit paws as well. Carrot took to this new form of combat immediately, and from here on out, Pedro became something of a mentor to her. And the other mink most closely associated with Carrot would be Wanda, a fellow member of the Musketeer squad with whom Carrot shares a sort of sisterly bond with. And so Carrot spent her early years training until eventually one of Zoe's darkest days would hit the mink tribe head on, as Jack, a calamity of the Emperor Kaido, led a full-scale invasion of the island in search of a samurai that they had been harboring. Carrot, along with the rest of the Musketeer squad, responded immediately, and she went on to show off her exceptional combat abilities, displaying that she not only possessed the sheer stamina to engage in battle for hours upon hours of a day, but also being fully capable capable of wielding the mink exclusive ability, Electro. And while we're here, I should also state that Carrot's agility is nothing short of superb. And she has shown to be capable of easily dodging strikes from powerhouse individuals such as Roar and Orozoro. With this in mind, Carrot valiantly faced off against the Beast Pirates until nightfall, at which point Inu Arashi ordered their retreat, while Nekomamushi and the Guardians appeared to continue the battle. Carrot and the Musketeers would continue this tag team strategy for five days until Jack eventually released a deadly chemical weapon named Koro, leaving the mink tribe decimated. However, luckily for them, Jack would be called away by the news of the defeat of one of Kaido's associates, Doflamingo, by the hands of Straw Hat Captain Monkey D. Luffy. And even luckier, a contingent of the Straw Hat shortly thereafter arrived on the island with the very man who had created the chemical weapon and proceeded to force him to craft a cure for the tribe. And so as a result of these actions, Carrot would develop a strong sense of depth towards the Straw Hats, especially Sanji. And so when he was kidnapped by Capone Gang Beige, Carrot volunteered to travel to Totaland in order to retrieve him. And when I say volunteered, I mean silently volunteered by stealthily stowing away aboard the Thousand Sunny and only making her presence known after it was far, far too late to do anything about it. Sneaky rabbit. And so Carrot, along with her mentor Pedro, became embroiled in the sheer chaos that unfolded on Whole Cake Island, which included becoming part of an assassination plot targeting one of the four emperors of the sea, Charlotte Lin Lin, better known as Big Mom. During this time, Carrot proved a great asset to the Sanji retrieval team, having effectively faced off against the homie Randolph, as well as teaming up with Chopper to defeat the denizens of the Mirror World and capture Charlotte Brule, who would become integral in their plans going forward. Despite this, the assassination plot ended in complete disaster for all parties involved, with an enraged Charlotte Lin Lin remaining in the world of the living and the collapse of Whole Cake Chateau. This prompted Carrot and the rest of the allied forces to conduct an immediate retreat, during which Pedro opted to sacrifice himself to allow the Straw Hats to escape, but not before providing some final words to his pupil, telling her that no matter what, the Straw Hats must survive, as he believed that they would bring about the dawn of the world. And with that, Pedro self-destructed, heavily wounding Charlotte Perospero and freeing the Thousand Sunny from his candy grasp. At first, Carrot was unable to control her emotions, crying out to Pedro, and later becoming enraged enough to face one of Big Mom's sweet commanders, Charlotte Katakuri, head on, an opponent in which not even Carrot's supreme abilities could overcome. However, Carrot would eventually gain control of herself, realizing that this was not the time for mourning, and upon revelation of a full moon that night, Carrot unleashed her full force upon the Big Mom pirates. And this is due to the fact that Carrot, like every member of the Mink tribe, gains access to her Sulong transformation upon gazing into a full moon, which morphs her body into a taller, faster, stronger, and significantly significantly more dangerous individual in every way. However, unlike most members of the Mink tribe, Carrot seems to have a good level of control of her Sulong form and was able to maximize her time before being forced to revert back out of the sheer exhaustion caused by it. However, her feats whilst in Sulong mode included disrupting an entire fleet of Tata ships led by Charlotte Daifuku and rendering them unable to sail, even managing to remove the helm from Daifuku's flagship itself. After this point, Carrot had expended 
far too much energy and was rendered unable to continue fighting. But luckily she did end up escaping with the rest of the Straw Hats, although the pain of losing Pedro was still very much fresh in her mind. However, with a mighty resolve, she decided to keep moving forward, which is very much evident in her words to Sanji, where she implored him not to be sad for Pedro, but instead to simply tell him thank you. And it's here that I'll throw up a spoiler warning for the events of the Reverie and Wano arcs. Should you wish to know nothing at all, this is a good time to skip to this point in the video. But for everyone else who either knows what they're getting themselves into or simply don't care, here we go. Following the events of Whole Cake Island, Carrot accompanied the Straw Hats to the island of Wano, joining the rest of the Ming forces that had arrived on the island. And at the time of this recording, she is currently in preparation to wage war on another Emperor of the Sea, Kaido. Some more fun facts about Carrot. In addition to her combat prowess, Carrot is also quite an accomplished visual artist, able to create complex and accurate drawings simply from memory, albeit with a particularly bishonen twist. Despite being a member of Inuarashi's Musketeers, Carrot dons a green cape rather than their uniform blue cape. This may be as a result of her tutelage under Pedro, who is a member of the Guardians, all of whom wear green capes. In the sixth popularity poll, Carrot came in at a very respectable 26th place, making her the most popular member of the Mink tribe in the series. And finally, a truly useless fact, as a stereotypical rabbit, Carrot loves, well, carrots. So much so that if forced to gather provisions for a long trip, her supplies will consist entirely of carrots. This is despite the fact that in reality, carrots make rabbits incredibly sick upon consumption, and the whole carrot thing is a huge misconception that was spread by the antics of a certain Bugs Bunny. But that pretty much does it for Carrot. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if Patreon isn't quite your style, then please do leave this video a like, share, or subscribe because it also helps support this channel an incredible amount. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101. And now for your viewing torture, I present the very worst rabbit joke I could find on the internet. Why did the bald man print rabbits on his head? Because from a distance, they looked like hares. I, uh, I apologize profusely for that.